Thank you. Thank you. Well, moving on, former head of Intel's Accelerated Computing Systems and Graphics business, Raja Koduri, who recently quit the company, has announced the launch of his new generative AI startup, Mihira AI. Now, through this new venture, he aims to democratize access to sophisticated hardware and AI tools for artists, especially in India. Shilpa Rani Peta caught up with Raja Koduri to understand more about his plans with this new venture. Mihira AI, we want to build a platform for storytellers, right. right? And particularly storytellers here in India. And it's a hardware, software, uh, and services platform. Uh, and Mihira AI will have over uh, 200 artists by the end of the year. We have a, we are building a data center infrastructure here for them. And we also are building some very interesting uh, software tools uh, that enable access to this data center in a very productive manner uh, and enable you know, storytelling and creation uh, using all these computing resources as well. Right. You know, from what I've understood, the larger idea for you is to sort of democratize access uh, to sort of that, uh, you know, high tech or even difficult technology that usually these artists may. So just give me a sense on, you know, what your focus is going to be, even when you say artists, if you can uh, help our audience also understand exactly what areas you'll be looking at. And, you know, when you say democratize the access, what exactly is the problem that you're trying to solve? Right. Yeah, uh, I think uh, you uh, and everybody might have heard AI is impacting every industry, right? And there's a lot of uh, commotion around AI. Uh, there are new tools every day that say they generate images, they generate videos, they clone your voice, they do deep fakes. There are literally 200 plus tools out there that say they do stuff, right? And for an artist, it's overwhelming, okay? Right. And uh, that's one issue. The second issue is the cost of AI, right? Cost of training models, cost of, uh, you know, generating new images is quite high. Uh, you know, but there is a larger problem in AI right now, right, which is that there is silicon, there is systems and software. Right. The software and system, software plays a big role. So today there is only one company that got this entire thing right, which is NVIDIA. That's mm -hmm. why they're getting, they're a trillion dollar plus company and they are getting the full share of profits from everybody. We need alternatives, right, particularly in India to that ecosystem. So without solving the software and systems problem, if you just do silicon, you aren't going to do that. I've done silicon for 27 years, I know right. that, right? So that's why I want to spend time on software and systems. And Mihira, I picked a domain which I was passionate about, which is stories and all, to solve it. But some of the technologies we, we develop as part of Mihira will help all the other fields in AI as well, whether it is medical, you know, this, communications, everything that everybody wants to use, chat, GPT type stuff, banks and all. So we will build some, some of the technologies we build will have impact on those other segments as well. But as Mihira, we needed to be focused on one, one domain just to build uh, our tool chain. Very interesting. And uh, help me understand your presence in India. Uh, how much of your business is going to be India-based? And how large do you see India being a market uh, for you going forward? India will be a huge market. I think India is uh, at a very high growth tra trajectory. And uh, and the art talent, the engineering talent, it's Mehira is a combination of art and engineering. Right. Where else would you go to find uh, uh, large pools of this talent? India. Okay, so yeah, of course, it will be very large presence in India, but we'll have offices across the globe as well, uh, right? I have uh, office in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. I'll have an office in Singapore. We'll have off several offices in uh, India, you know, Hyderabad, Bangalore, and you know the other usual stuff. But one interesting thing I'd like to say is that because our strategy is especially for capturing some of the art talent. Uh, we will also go to small towns. Uh, right. For example, uh, we Mihira already has a presence in uh, uh, Rajamandri, a very small town. Right? We have over 150 artists sitting there. Okay, that will be part of our team. So we want to enable many small towns right. uh, and people from there. On that note, it is time for us to head into a short break. As on Startup Street, e-commerce logistics giant Shiprocket has enabled over 50 sellers on the ONDC platform since June 
when it integrated its seller app on the open network. Co-founder and CEO Sahil Goel tells CNBC TV 18's Aishwarya Anand. The startup has even launched a WhatsApp bot for Indian SMBs. Here's a slice of that conversation. Sahil, it's been over a month since Shiprocket integrated its seller app to the ONDC platform. Uh, tell me how many merchants have you onboarded uh, to the open network till date and what kind of revenues have these, have these small players been able to clock till now? Um, so we built a beta integration mm -hmm. about a couple of months ago and mm -hmm. uh, so far have controlled the experiment to send about 50 merchants. We have brands like Bolt Audio, uh, Nirmala and a few other brands that we've picked in the initial pilot and um, you know we are launching them with fewer products and doing it slowly. Mm -hmm. So the volume or the value of goods right now is not very relevant. The mm -hmm. idea was to test the whole integration, have them go live on platforms like Pincode and Paytm. Uh, but early traction is very, very promising. You know, we are seeing uh, a few hundred orders, uh, mm. which is very promising given that it's a very light skew footprint at the moment. But as we scale it to the rest of the platform, which we announced today, uh, that we'll open it for uh, pretty much any seller to come from Monday and be able to do it in a self-serve fashion, we'll start seeing a lot more traction and adoption in the coming months. A Shiprocket also enabled five categories on ONDC, that is beauty and personal care, fashion, electronics and appliances, health and wellness, kitchen and home. So tell me how have these uh, you know, categories been performing on your platform yeah. and what's the plan going forward? Yeah, so um, those are the largest categories for us on the platform yeah. with BPC or beauty and personal care in the first position, fashion and accessories in the second position and the rest are broadly evenly split uh, in, in you know, three, four and five. We think it should mimic the same behavior, again, because it's super early right now, it's hard to say how that behaves on ONDC and so on. Um, but we think that you know, it will be very similar because given we process nearly 15 million transactions a month, it's a, it's a fair assessment of you know, where, the market, where the market's at. Now, in another development, you've also forayed into WhatsApp commerce. You've just launched uh, your own chatbot and you've also partnered with Sail AI. Okay. Uh, so, firstly, take us through uh, what does uh, this new chatbot, uh, you know, what does it do, uh, how will it uh, play out and also what does your synergy with uh, uh, Sail AI, how is it going to impact uh, Shiprocket's business? Sure. So, uh, we have been powering communication messages for our merchants for over a year now under the brand Engage, which has been our product that's been live. Nearly 8,000 merchants already use it and we send uh, you know, millions of messages every month through that product. A lot of our merchants came back and asked for us to power their shopping experiences as well, as well as give them a way to start to target their own customers through that product. So mm -hmm. we launched something today at Shiver called Engage Plus, which actually lets you manage the whole journey from putting your catalog from let's say a Shopify directly onto WhatsApp, make it shoppable, use chat GPT like uh, AI to be able to interact with the bot. So it's built in a, as a WhatsApp in a box or a business in a box for WhatsApp kind of a product which is launched today and focus especially on the small to medium businesses who don't have the need to customize, who don't have the need to write custom workflows, who don't want to change the text and really want it going out of the box in a few minutes. The partnership with Sale.ai is to do similar things on the shopping side, but for larger brands. All right. Uh, now, uh, you know, Shiprocket X, which is your uh, cross-border shipping product, right? They recently part partnered with eBay to uh, bring cross-border e-commerce e solutions for Indian SMEs. So I want to understand from you how many Indian sellers do you uh, plan to, you know, help them get a global audience and uh, what, have, what have been some of the challenges when it co comes to e cross-border e-commerce and also take us through what are the volumes that you're clocking here currently and what does the turnover look like? There are two kinds of sellers, right? There are right. folks right now who sell on platforms like Amazon, Etsy and eBay and there the value proposition is to basically help them ship it easier. Mm -hmm. that today they can uh, you know, either spend very little and send their goods in 25-30 days, Correct. which in many cases leads to poor buy experience, or spend a lot right, and get it there in 4-5 to five days. Mm -hmm. What's missing is this sort of premium economy product where you think, okay, well, can I get it there in 8-12 to 12 days mm -hmm. at a slight markup, but it doesn't break the pocket, right? How do you do that? So that it's a it's a good average option for a typical you know foreign buyer, and it, it makes the process viable. So I think that's the product that's the problem sort of that we attacked and went after. And you know the business has grown over 10x in the last one year. Um, you know we are powering nearly 300 to 400 crores of GMV today. Shiprocket has uh, 
posted a loss of 93 crores and FI22 against a profit of 12 crores, 12.4 uh, crore uh, during FI21. What's the return to profitability looking like and when can we expect it? See, I think our uh, business turned profitable in March of 2019 and we were pat positive post that. Mm. Um, the core shipping business mm. continues to make a profit. It always has, right? And that continues to scale as a mature business. Since then, we've accelerated our roadmap by building, for example, ShipRocket X, mm. right? Uh, the WhatsApp bot. Mm. And there's various other initiatives that we've launched in the market, including our warehousing product. And each of these are treated like, treated like projects which have a return, mm. right? So you invest for six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months, and you measure a return where you have to give it that time to incubate. And then either it returns or it dies, right? So the focus <laughs> is on basically being able to continue the core business growth, but at the same time, let make investments in all of these new uh, initiatives. So we do not look at it like a loss. Mm. 